When it comes to writing a good story, some follow Tehain of Vulcan to dictate the action through the characters, and others just make it up as they go along for those unexpected plot twists. You may want to rely on a Muse Eternal for your sudden reversals, or if you're out of ideas to surprise your audience, simply add a mustache and change the name to Mersey. Star Trek has provided us with countless moments we never expected. Twists and turns that upended the plot, left us desperately waiting for the next episode, changed a character or characters forever, and even transformed entire lore. Most of these revelations have ultimately proven for the better of the episode or the series, and the fact that the audience, or a vast majority at least, did not anticipate them is a testament to the skill of the writers. It is that carefully crafted touch of the unforeseeable that keeps us on our toes after all. Very occasionally, however, the reason for a twist's unpredictability is the trivial irrationality of an anti-climax. You didn't see that one coming because you're asking, why on earth would I have seen that one coming? Some of these moments will also be discussed here. We're looking at you, the burn. And of course, avoiding major plot points is all the more difficult in a social media age. That there are spoilers ahead in this article almost goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, spoilers ahead for pretty much all of Star Trek. With that being said, I'm Brie from Trek Culture, and here are 10 Star Trek twists that you never saw coming. Number 10 the Odo origination. As unexpected twists go, we could have talked about the decloaking of Starfleet's first ever warship at the start of Star Trek Deep Space Nine's episode, The Search Part 1, and just left things there. This little surprise for the Dominion is of course the Defiant. The reveal was certainly a surprise for the audience, more used to runabouts and the Treaty of Algeron. There is more to this two-parter, however. Odo's search for his origins forms a large part of seasons 1 and 2 of DS9. Both the character and the audience had little to go on. The scientist, Dr. Paul, who discovered Odo floating in Bajoran space, didn't recognize that the shapeless, viscous mass of fluid was sentient at first, and it took time for Odo to even realize that he could shapeshift. We get a few hints at Odo's beginnings in Season 2, such as when DNA similar to his is discovered on a seemingly abandoned planet in the Gamma Quadrant. When Odo finally finds out where he really comes from in The Search Part 2 of Season 3, it comes as quite a shock. Odo is actually a member of an alien race called the the founders who created and lead the Dominion, holding solids in low esteem. The DS9 series Bible entry for this character stated that Odo is certain that justice is an integral part of his species. The truth, however, couldn't have been more different, and Odo is left estranged from his warmongering people until the very last episode of the series. You know, a certain Michael Eddington was also introduced in The Search Part 1. Wonder what happens with him? Number 9. The Valjean Incarnation When Lieutenant Commander Michael Eddington Eddington was introduced in Season 3 of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. He was intended to be a rather by-the-book Starfleet security officer, and a thorn in the side of Odo. Not especially likable, but not entirely disdainable either. At that stage, the writers and producers hadn't decided on a particular arc for the character. Over the episodes, the dynamic between him and Sisko would be favored over that of his adversarial relationship with Odo. Apparently, before the big reveal of the character's alternate allegiances, viewers were convinced Eddington was a changeling. Even even more so after the episode The Adversary, during which a founder takes control of the Defiant and nearly starts a war. It was decided at this point to make Eddington a leading member of the Maquis. This twist then came in the episode For the Cause, when the character defects from Starfleet definitively, taking some industrial replicators along for the ride. Eddington's actor Ken Marshall was reportedly surprised but pleased by this turn of events, only finding out when reading the script for The Cause. Fans were equally as shocked, having warmed to the character in Season 4 with episodes such as Our Man Bashir. The story is then wrapped up in Season 5 of DS9 as Eddington places himself in the role of the protagonist Valjean, relentlessly pursued by the vindictive Sisko as Javert. Number 8. The Sesco Retaliation The Star Trek Voyager Season 3 episode Worst Case Scenario begins with a faux twist. The cold open ends with the reveal that Chakotay is planning a mutiny. Dun dun dun! It does feel a little strange that Chakotay would have waited almost three years to express his grievances to such an extent that a more informed audience would have been dubious. There are other clues that things aren't as they appear, like the fact that Janeway is wearing her hair up in a bun, although they changed that so often that it might have just been a hairstyle of the week kind of thing. Nonetheless, you might not have realized that this was all photons and force fields until you were told as such. Indeed, the first 18 minutes or so of this episode takes place entirely in the holodeck, ten of which you would have been left only with questions about 
about this supposed Maquis rebellion. This isn't the main surprise of the episode, however. When the crew demands an ending to Insurrection Alpha, Tuvok and Paris return to the holodeck to get writing. They find that the long-dead Seska has, rather literally, beaten them to the punch. She had found the program and rewritten it to cause all kinds of havoc should anyone reopen the narrative parameter file. Clearly, no one saw that one coming. Tuvok and Paris are trapped on the holodeck and subjected to Seska's torturous whims until they, along with Captain Janeway, manage to write a happier ending. Number 7, The Lorca Elucidation Season 1 of Discovery was notably more somber than we had come to expect for a Star Trek, and a lot of this darker tone came from the top, Captain Gabriel Lorca. There was a reason for this. Lorca was, in fact, from the Mirror Universe and had taken over the life, and perhaps taken the life, of his prime counterpart. Sure, some fans spotted this a mile off, but many were left wondering until the last moment. The big reveal didn't come until the 12th episode of the season, Vaulting Ambition, but it had been telegraphed throughout. There was his relationship with Michael Burnham, recruiting her from prison after saving her life, and doting on her from then on. It turned out Lorca had a more intimate relationship with Mirror Burnham. Lorca equally seemed to have a few gaps in his memory regarding his past with Admiral Cornwell, and she noticed a change in his personality. He slept with a phaser under his pillow, and at the same time we see a triangular scar on his back, which in hindsight is known to be from an agonizer. Lorca's un-Starfleet approach to all things is also as glaring as his sensitivity to light. The actor, Jason Isaacs, delighted in the duplicity of the role, and when asked by Entertainment Weekly what the twist meant for Prime Lorca's fate, he jokingly replied, almost in character, I've lied to the press consistently since the very first day, so why would you believe anything I say now? Number 6, The Borg Pacification. Season 2 of Star Trek Picard opened and ended with the Borg. In later episodes, we're given the twist that the Borg, or rather Dr. Gerardi and the Confederation Timeline Queen's version of it, will be peaceful and respect the uniqueness of their members. People must agree to be assimilated from now on, which, good luck with that. What would the recruitment even be like? We are the Borgati. Please carefully read our terms and conditions and consult a healthcare professional before attending one of our assimilation open days closed on Tuesdays. In the finale, the Gerardi Borg are even given provisional membership of the Federation. Who could have foreseen this twist for any version of the Borg? Also, what's the deal with the gigantic transwarp conduit? Is it the work of the Borg in the Prime Universe? What did Gerardi slash the Queen get up to in the intervening years, and where? We're left with a lot of unanswered questions. Season 3 of Picard, we're told, will take place about two years after the events of Season 2, and will focus on the main cast of The Next Generation. With Alison Pill, who plays Gerardi, having confirmed that she's not returning, it seems unlikely that we'll be getting an answer about the Borg twist. Number 5, The Kelpian Cauterization. It turned out that the cause of the utterly devastating galactic event of the 31st century, the Burn, which wiped out every ship with an active warp core, killed whatever the collective noun is for that many people, and pretty much saw the collapse of the Federation, was one angry Kelpian with a bizarre connection to dilithium. If you saw that one coming, please use your powers for good. And to quote the Trek Culture podcast on the matter, is that it? What's Kelpian for, are you kidding me? We were teased about the Burn nearly all season flipping three long of Star Trek Discovery. Michael Burnham was pretty much obsessed from the moment Booker told her about it, and the audience was rather intrigued too. As is fun for fans, multiple theories as to its cause started to emerge, including a link to Omega, an accident caused by Burnham's suit, a tie-in with the Next Generation episode Force of Nature, extra-dimensional manipulations via the mysterious music, the return of Lazarus from the original series, the Borg, the temporal Cold War, and so on. As far out as some might have been, all of them were far better than the actual explanation. Plot twists like this are impossible to predict for all the wrong reasons. The baffling and maddening anticlimax. The shock comes from the natural desire to avoid one's own disappointment. Number 4, The Freeman Fabrication. The season 2 finale of Star Trek Lower Decks gives us high stakes and a lot of action. It begins when the crew of the Cerritos are accompanying the Archimedes on a first contact mission with the Liparians. We also learn that Captain Freeman has earned a promotion and will no doubt have to transfer without her senior staff. Later, when the Archimedes is disabled by a solar flare, the entire crew of the Cerritos pull together to save it from colliding with the Liparian planet. Seeing how well the crew handled the crisis situation, Freeman realizes that she was mistaken to pursue her promotion and that the Cerritos is her home. When a team from Starfleet Command arrive, the captain is expecting to have to politely decline the transfer. Instead, we are given the highly unexpected, jaw-dropping moment of Freeman's arrest for the destruction of the Paclet planet in collusion with a group of Klingons. She was innocent, of course, but still. The scene in which Freeman walks down the corridor 
corridor in handcuffs, surrounded by the shocked faces of her crew, who are all ready to cheer her on, is actually quite moving, and it leaves us waiting for season 3 with bated breath. This was such a good cliffhanger ending that it was marked by the first to be continued since season 4 of Star Trek Enterprise. Number 3. The Romulan Revelation The Romulans have been used as a surprise reveal in various episodes across several of the Star Trek series. The first, and undoubtedly still the best, is somewhat naturally the introduction in the original series episode, Balance of Terror. When the Enterprise view screen flickers into focus and the Romulan commander turns around into full view, we see that he looks eerily like a Vulcan. The bridge is stunned into silence and the camera closes in on the face of an equally baffled Spock. No one in Starfleet or the Federation had seen a Romulan before this point, and Spock hypothesizes that they are indeed related to Vulcans. Used quite sparingly in the rest of TOS, the Romulans notably returned in the We're Back twist of the Next Generation episode, The Neutral Zone. A frequent foe from that point on, the audience is treated to many an unexpected Romulan plot twist. Spock appears to defect to Romulus, but is actually working on reunification. Troy wakes up as a Romulan, and who could forget the reveal of Sela? There are also a few unforeseen shock moments with the Romulans in Star Trek Enterprise. At the very end of the season 4 Serenite arc, it's revealed to the audiences that the Vulcan officer, who had been working with the duplicitous head of the Vulcan High Command, is in fact a Romulan. He states that despite the pair's failure, reunification is only a matter of time. Not long after, we find out that the Romulans are behind the attack on the holographically enhanced drone ship. Number 2. The Bashir Substitution In the 14th episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine's fifth season, we find out that Dr. Bashir is being held prisoner in a Dominion internment camp. Moreover, he's still wearing the older Voyager-style uniform. But wait, hasn't he been on the station this whole time? That's right, the Bashir of Deep Space Nine is a changeling. The puzzled look on Worf and Garrick's face is a mirror for the audience. Inasmuch as we never saw this twist coming, it appears that the writers and producers had a little trouble with the continuity of this revelation, having to clarify a few issues after the fact. For the captured Bashir to appear in the older style uniform, the switch with the changeling must have reasonably taken place before the switch to the new uniforms in the episode Rapture of the same season. If so, this would mean that the changeling version of Bashir performed complex neurosurgery on Captain Sisko and delivered the O'Brien's baby, all while taking part in social activities and completely duping everyone on Deep Space Nine. In retrospect, there are also some potential problems with the in-world timing of the interim events. Furthermore, according to the Star Trek Deep Space Nine companion, Bashir actor Alexander Siddig was unaware of the changeling twist until the last minute, and hence had not played the character any differently in the previous episodes. He was as surprised as the rest of us. Number 1. The Holographic Recursion In the Star Trek TNG episode Ship in a Bottle, Moriarty returns and appears to do the impossible. He leaves the holodeck by sheer willpower alone. Data later discovers, however, through some left-handed Holmesian deduction that he, Picard, and Barclay are still on the holodeck. They are, in fact, stuck in a simulation of the Enterprise-D created by the sinister Moriarty, who had also taken control of the real Enterprise. Eventually, the trapped crew members manage to program the holodeck within the holodeck to trick Moriarty into thinking he's transporting out into the real world. As producer Brandon Braga put it, it was a twisty-turny complex mystery of an episode. If you couldn't follow all the ins and outs of this play within a play within a bubble of technobabble, then neither could those who were working on the episode. Reportedly, the TNG staff kept track only with the aid of diagrams that they drew during breaks in filming. Nevertheless, the fact that Moriarty's transubstantiation is a trick and that all our trio had never actually left the holodeck is hinted at before it's revealed. For example, there are no external shots shown of the Enterprise D until the very end of the episode. This is a method often used to indicate that events are happening in the holodeck or inside the mind of a character. And those were 10 Star Trek twists that you hopefully never saw coming. If you liked this video, make sure you give it a like and let us know if there's anything that we missed in the comments below. If you like what we do here, you can also hit that subscribe button and never miss new content when it comes out. You can also follow us on Twitter at Trek Culture or on Instagram at Trek Culture YT. You can also find me on various social medias at Trekkie Bree. With all that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and don't forget to live long and prosper.